Come along with us, adventurers, because we're about to go on a massive multiversal journey as we dive into the newest installment of the Adventure Time Saga. Say goodbye to Finn and Jake and say hello to Fiona and Cake. With new protagonists also come new friends, new heroes, and of course, new enemies. But of the many friendly and fiendish faces the multiverse holds, which would have your back in the toughest of situations? And which would you not want to be stuck in the same room with, nor even the same universe? I'm Key Fionosi with Wicked Binge, and this is Adventure Time Fiona and Cake, Good to Evil. We're starting this list off with the best of the best, the characters who would have your back no matter what. These characters are the good. In spot number one, we're giving the gold medal of good to Finn the human. Whether it's his prime world self or the version that resides in the farm world, Finn is always a good-natured and kind-hearted individual ready to help those in need, just like any good adventurer. Even the aforementioned farm world incarnation of Finn, who is more cynical and jaded than his counterparts, is still waiting to aid Fiona and Cake in their journey back home. He fends off Big Destiny's crew, and while it's not made clear whether he lives or dies, he's ready to sacrifice himself to Scarab to allow Fiona and Cake to make their escape. Whatever universe we find him in, he sees the good in everyone and is ready for whatever life has in store for him. Though he does take a backseat in this series to many other characters, it's clear that time and experience have molded Finn into the exact kind of adventurer he's always dreamt of being. As the greatest hero in the land of Ooh, how could we not give him the top spot on this list? Coming into second place and earning the Silver Medal of Good is the same man who was once an enemy of Finn, Simon Petrikov. No longer the crazed Ice King, Simon seems like a person who should have a great life in store for him, but when we first encounter him here, he's anything but happy. He's the only ordinary human in a world of strange and magical beings. It makes him almost miss being the Ice King. Things start to pick up in his new life when he encounters Fiona and Cake and embarks on a quest with them to bring back magic to their universe. This is where Simon's best characteristics really begin to shine. To bring Fiona's universe back to the way it should be, Simon must become the Ice King once more. He knows this is a dangerous idea, as it will cost him greatly, but he's ready to do it to help his friends. It shows that Simon is selfless and heroic in a way that few other characters in Ooh, or any of its alternate universes are. Even before he ever became the Ice King, Simon was still as helpful and as brave as he is now. He protected a young Marceline in the wake of the Mushroom War, practically becoming a better father figure to her than her own father. While Simon is an intelligent and thoughtful man, he does have his weaknesses. He can be pretty cowardly at times, and he's quick to doubt himself, too. He can also be rather defeatist, which is a major character trait that causes the love of his life, Betty, to give up much of her life to help him. Despite all of this, Simon manages to evolve throughout the series, finally moving on from Betty and learning that he doesn't need magic to be seen as a worthwhile individual. Arguably the character to endure the most complicated character arc of anyone in the entire franchise, Simon might not be as brave nor as adventurous as Finn, but he's every bit as giving and selfless, cementing him in this spot. For third place, we're given the bronze medal of good to the lead of the series, Fiona. When we first meet her, Fiona is a pretty average young adult. She has a small but nevertheless loyal set of friends, a job she cannot stand, and a longing for more in life. That thirst is finally quenched when she gets involved in a journey throughout the multiverse, forcing her to become the hero she only dreamed of being previously. While Fiona exhibits bravery and perseverance during this adventure, she isn't without her moments of doubt. During the quest, she notes that many of her actions seem to only be making things worse for the inhabitants of the universes she visits. This causes her to worry about not only whether she's a good hero or not, but also if the ends justify the means. This is most evident when she visits an alternate version of the Candy Kingdom, and realizes all the inhabitants she defeated were innocent pawns to the Winter King. Despite being doubtful of her actions and abilities, these attributes are an important stepping stone in her character arc. These moments help her realize that there's more to being a hero than fame and glory, and she must grow past that idea to truly become a hero. And in the end, she absolutely has the traits you'd want in a hero. She bravely protects her home and friends from the Scarab, and sees that that home is perfect the way it is. It's a great evolution for her character and the perfect mirror to Simon's arc. Fiona might be immature and lacks the experience of a predecessor, but when push comes to shove, she's every bit the hero she dreamt of being. Not a bad transformation for a character to take on in 10 episodes, wouldn't you say? Oh, also, the sloth metal has to go to Fiona the human. Come on, have you seen what her home looks like? We're not done with Fiona's world just yet. We're just about to meet one of her best friends, Gary Prince. A pastry chef who works in a bakery with dreams of opening up a shop of his own, Gary's close friends with Fiona. She's a frequent visitor to the store, and she has no issue discussing her problems with him. Though their relationship starts off rockier, he becomes good friends with Marshall Lee, with the two eventually becoming a couple. Though he's polite and sweet, Gary Prince is similar to Fiona in that he has a recurring problem with believing in himself. He doesn't totally have faith in his abilities as a chef, which which isn't helped by people like Beatrice Butler shunning his creations. Thankfully, his bond with Marshall helps boost his confidence and his willingness to experiment, showing that even he grows as the series progresses.
is. While Gary isn't a hero like his friend Fiona is, he's still a faithful friend who always tries to get along with others. Plus, he sure can bake a tasty treat. Wherever Gary Prince is, Marshall Lee isn't far behind, and that's why he's up next. Lee isn't all that different from the OG Marceline in terms of personality. He's kind of a loner, likes to keep things mysterious, and has a musical side as well. His relationship with Gary starts a little on the antagonistic side, with Lee often getting in a few snarky jabs at Gary and his aspirations. But as the two spend more time together, they grow closer and closer, finally becoming a couple in the show's last episodes. The evolution of their relationship also allows Marshall to evolve as a character. He opens up and begins to show more of his true self, and even stands up to his mother, something he had never really done before. While he isn't quite as approachable as the likes of Gary or Fiona, Marshall Lee has all the makings of a true and loyal friend, and it deserves to be in this area of the list. Finishing off the good entries, let's take a look at Fiona's feline friend, Cake. While Cake is as loyal to Fiona as Jake is to Finn, Cake is definitely a lot more careless and impulsive than Fiona could ever be. She doesn't have the same regard for others' feelings and well-being as Fiona does, which leads to the two butting heads often. Take how both look at Simon, for instance. Fiona worries about what he'll be like after using the crown, but Cake? She doesn't care one bit. As long as she gets to stay the way she is, she's totally fine with whatever happens to him. Cake also suffers from refusing to look at situations slowly and analytically. Instead, she rushes into action, which only causes trouble for both herself and her friends. Cake is a hothead and not the most intelligent figure in the show, but it cannot be denied that she has her heart in the right place. She usually realizes the error of her ways and will always have Fiona and her friends backs. Maybe she could be better behaved and a smarter fighter, but we can't think of a better cat to be your companion in an adventure. The Darwin Medal has to go to Cake, though. She's a good fighter, but she's definitely not the best at strategizing. With the heroes out of the way, it's time to dissect the characters that are neither good nor evil. These characters reside in the gray area. First up here is a pretty obvious pick, Prismo. A being with the power to grant anyone's wishes, Prismo lives in the center of the multiverse and is an important figure in watching over said multiverse. He can create universes and make sure things are in order in all of them. Despite being very dedicated to his work, he does end up creating one universe for himself, the Fiona and Cake universe, showing that he will occasionally use his powers for his own interests. In a way, you could argue that all the events of the show fall on his shoulders. Despite this, Prismo does try to get them to go back to their home, showing that he's at least quick to note when he's made a mistake. Really though, the main reason Prismo is in the gray area is because of his role in the show's universe. He'll grant anyone a wish, whether they be a hero or villain. His job of making sure every dimension is in order also causes him to change the lives of certain individuals that live within them, sometimes for the better and sometimes for worse. We would say he's the perfect character to sit in the exact middle, but truth be told, he does lean more towards good than anything else. He helps Fiona and Cake escape from the Scarab and is on friendly terms with them by the time they leave. Overall, it's his friendly demeanor and willingness to help that get him out of a lower position on this list. He may not be the most responsible nor smartest character, but we cannot think of anyone else who'd be a better fit for keeping the multiverse in check. The Gluttony Medal goes to Prismo. Though he changes when the show gets going, he's a bored alcoholic when we first meet him, making him the obvious choice for this one. Next, let's take a trip to the Winter Kingdom as we look at its greatest threat, the Candy Queen. This queen essentially acts toward the Winter King the same way the Ice King acts toward Princess Bubblegum in the original series. Much like him, she's devious, crazy, and a common annoyance to the people they go after. At least, that's how it seems at first. Though the Candy Queen looks to be a dangerous threat when Fiona and Cake first encounter her, they later learn that she's more of a victim than anything else. The Winter King is the real villain, as he projected the mental toil of the crown onto her, causing her to go insane instead of himself. After this is revealed, she reverts to her classic Princess Bubblegum self and offers nothing but thanks to Fiona for helping free her. While we cannot completely ignore what she did as the Candy Queen, the fact that she wasn't in control of herself during that time does keep her out of a worse spot. In conclusion, the Candy Queen has proved that people are more than what they seem like at a glance. First impressions can be quite important, but it's only after that that you really begin to see what a person is like. We have one last character to look at in the gray area, and it's the grotesque, the terrifying Jerry. Yeah, that is indeed his name, but that's not the only name he's ever gone by. Before, he was the Lich. This incarnation of the Lich actually succeeded in his mission to wipe out all of Ooh, but after accomplishing this, he's become a pathetic imitation of the being he once was. With no purpose in life anymore, he's stuck in an ongoing depressive episode. This is best seen when he meets Fiona and her friends. He notes that long before then, he would have destroyed them, but nowadays he can't even be bothered. A lot of you might be saying that Jerry should be in the evil area of this list, and maybe he should, but this version seen here is far too hopeless to be seen as a genuine threat. Instead of being scared of him, we're left almost feeling sorry for him. Not very evil, wouldn't you agree? At least not anymore. Jerry might have been a ruthless monster at one point, 
But here, he's anything but, forcing him into this position. Now that the gray area is done with, let's discuss those whose worlds you wouldn't want to be anywhere near. These characters are evil. Up first, the bronze medal of evil goes to the main antagonistic force in the series, the Scarab. The Scarab gets the spot because unlike the next two villains, he's just doing his job at the end of the day. He has to make sure all of the universes are as they should be and because Fiona and Cake's quest is in direct opposition to that job, he has to stop them. However, as the show goes on, we start to see more and more that the Scarab might not use his powers as responsibly as he should. He sees practically every crime as equal, no matter how little or silly they are. As his mission continues, he becomes less focused on keeping the the different dimensions in line, and more obsessed with taking down Fiona and Cake. By the time we get to the final episode, he's attempting to destroy their entire world, a perfect showcase of how much he's lost the plot. We think everyone knows a person or two who takes a job a little too seriously. And the Scarab is absolutely one of those people. Maybe his time as Prismo's assistant will humble him and better him as a person. Hopefully. In second to last place, the Star takes hold of the Silver Medal of Evil. Healing from an alternate universe where vampires rule Ooh, the Star is an alternate version of Marceline. Completely cruel and unfeeling, the Star only respects the Vampire King. Everyone else, be they her minions or Bonnie's rebel army, they feel only her wrath and rage. The Scarab might have been dangerous, but his actions were at least initially born out of a sense of keeping things in order. The Star loves chaos, death, destruction, and little else. Those are pretty much the only things that inspire her actions, so no misplaced sense of heroism here. Although Although the star is at least as evil as any regular old vampire, there is one more character that outdoes her in the villainy department. The Wrath Metal, though, has to go to the star. She annihilates her own followers, how could she not get this one? Finally, we've reached the baddest of the bad, and earning the Gold Medal of Evil is the Winter King. The Winter King, as we hinted at earlier, first seems to be a heroic counterpart to the Ice King. Unfortunately, that's nothing more than a sham. This version of Simon is arguably even more evil than the original was, as he forces the weight of using the crown onto Princess Bubblegum, causing her to become the crazed candy queen, and leaving him to reap the benefits. Not only that, but he's been doing this to both her and her followers for over a hundred years. Essentially, everything that's ever gone wrong in this universe is his fault. Although he has done his best job to hide that fact. While you could make an argument that the star was a more cruel and dangerous being, she is, at the end of the day, simply another pawn of the Vampire King. That cannot be said for this version of Simon. The Winter King is every bit as cruel and unfeeling as his predecessors were. He just does a better job of hiding it than they do, which only makes him all the more dangerous of an individual. If the prime version of Simon was one of the most morally respectable characters of the show, it's not at all surprising that his evil counterpart is one of the most horrific, making him a fitting final pick for the most evil of the entire miniseries. 